Travis, you and I have been through a lot together. Some unpleasant things, but, but more good, wonderful blessings. Don't you think it's about time to start having some more experiences? <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Well, we've been here in Antioch a long time, ever since we got back from the council in Jerusalem. You need not try to persuade me, Paul. I'm of the same opinion. It is time we revisited the churches we started. The new believers may need help and encouragement. When should we start? As soon as we can. But I think the work is going to be so heavy, we should take someone with us. Well, I have no objection. I, uh, I'd like to take John Mark. Uh... <laughs> You remember, of course, what happened when we took him before. He couldn't take the hardships and left us, went to the comforts of his home in Jerusalem. Oh, I realize all that, Paul. But Mark is older. He's developed his Christian experience since then. I'm sure he can be depended upon now. But what if he fails us again? It would have a bad influence on the believers, especially the new ones converted from heathenism. Uh, I don't think we should risk it. Well, I do. Well, we both have the right to our own opinions. <laughs> but, Barnabas, there's only one thing I'm interested in, and that is telling people of the cross and salvation. Then once they've taken their stand for Jesus on the cross, help them, encourage them, strengthen them. Oh, no, Barnabas, I'm not in favor of taking someone with us who has once proved unfaithful. Oh, he wasn't exactly unfaithful, Paul. It, it was merely that... Mark has proved he has but little stamina. Such a person is not fitted for a work requiring patience, self-denial, bravery, devotion, faith, and a willingness to sacrifice, if need be, even life itself. Well, I think he has these qualities. So he and I will go out together. Why don't you find someone else to go with you? Silas, I need a partner to go with me. Barnabas is going with Mark. Will you go with me? If you think I should. On this journey, we will be interested in one thing only, saving souls. I'll go with you. We will encounter many dangers, hardships, trials. I'm anxious to see how those who were converted through the labors of Barnabas and me have endured the trials and tribulations of being Christians. For that reason, we will be going to Lystra, where I was stoned very nearly to death. I'll go with you. Mother, my mind keeps going back to that day we stood around the torn and bruised body of Paul, thinking him dead. Outside of Jesus himself, I doubt if there ever has been a man less afraid of what will happen to his person, and more sincere and anxious to save people than Paul. Paul is terribly afraid of one thing. No, Mother, you're mistaken if, if you think Paul fears anything or anybody, even Satan. He fears that he might fail of presenting every man perfect in Christ. He trembles for the result of his ministry, that he might not faithfully use and develop the talents God has given him, and thus fail in giving someone the good news of salvation. Oh, Mother, how I long, how I pray that I may be like that. You have been taught and brought up to love and obey God's laws. And for this early training, Mother, I shall forever be thankful to you and Grandmother. Both of you have lived by your faith. See who that is, will you, son? Greetings, Timothy, my son. Greetings, Paul, sir. I... Well, come in, come in. Mother's here. Thank you. Uh, greetings, madam. May God grant you peace and bless your home. We're so happy to see you. We... We think and talk about you and Brother Barnabas almost all the time. Well, Barnabas isn't with me this time. May I present Silas, a godly man and a prophet. Welcome to our home, Silas. Sir. I heard so much about all of you that it seems I almost know you. So, you're Timothy. Yes, sir. You're Greek, I understand. Father is Greek, yes, but mother is an Israelite. Very wisely, my mother has taught me Israelite scripture since I was a child. She and her mother both. They try to take good care of me. Have you made up your mind yet, Paul? No, not entirely. What do you think of it? Well, there's no doubt that Timothy is a good boy, a real Christian. But whether he'll make a good minister of the gospel is hard to say. I think we need to find out a little more about him before we make up our minds. Timothy? Oh, 
he's one of the best young men I've ever known. Helpful and kind to everyone. Well, he certainly comes from a good home. He's been taught the scriptures since he was a child, and I, uh, I think he lives what he believes. I can't say enough good things about him. Timothy is faithful, steadfast, and true. I'm sure everyone in the church will agree with me. You know how young folks are these days. Well, Timothy is different. He's a hard worker, fearless, and thoughtful. And above all, he's willing to be taught. Why most young people won't even listen to older, experienced voices. Timothy, if you accept Paul's invitation to go along and help, you're taking on a great responsibility. Your work will be sacred, whether you are cleaning Paul's sandals or preaching to multitudes. It is God's work. You will have to forget self and think only of the cross. Jesus nailed to the cross. Salvation by way of the cross. Lift up the cross of Christ high and still higher, and still higher, for only by preaching salvation by Jesus on the cross will your labor as a minister be successful. Paul once said, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> 